59 is GBA Bowser Castle 1 and Mario Kart 7. This track is heavily improved, not only on just its visuals, but also with the length and the fact that a glider opens up near the end by a bunch of jump pads. While this definitely helps spruce things up a little, it's still a very boring Bowser Castle track, which does the bare minimum with the warmth and lava bubbles being very close together and not much substance there. Number 58 is N64 Moon Farm and Mario Kart DS. Now this version of the track is very similar to the original. You still have the cows and the bridges, but the mining moles aren't as obnoxious in my opinion since you can see them coming. Once again, it's just a very basic loop, but there's something about it that makes it occasionally enjoyable to come back to. Only occasional though. Number 59 is N64 Frappe Snowland, also Mario Kart DS. Now, this track doesn't have as many snowmen as the original, and they're not as annoying, but you can't take as many mushroom shortcuts on, on the snowbanks, meaning it's not really as fun. But it's still an improvement over the original, in both visuals and the layout. Number 56 is N64 Sherbet Land. Number 56 is N64 Sherbet Land. The version of Mario Kart Wii. I don't know why they're two Sherbet Lands for some reason. This track is, in my opinion, worse than the N64 version. See, in the Wii version, the track feels bigger and a bit more slippery. The penguins aren't as obnoxious, sure, but I feel that sometimes they can just come out of nowhere, and they really aren't that fun to deal with. Plus, it feels bigger, like I said, and bigger is not always better, especially if it applies to a boring, flat ice track. Number 55 is SNES Mario Circuit 2 and Mario Kart 7. Now, now with Mario Kart 7's glider gimmick, you think this track would be more interesting with its one jump that helps it stood out from other SNES tracks, right? Well, not really. See, in Mario Kart 7, a lot of tracks have gliders, including the retros which means that this one really doesn't have that much to offer, and therefore it's my least favorite Mario Kart 7 track. But, if there's one thing it does, it's one of my least favorites, but, if there's one of the things it's do this track does have, it does look a bit nicer, and there's a bumper at the end which you can check off of, so that's nice, I suppose. Number 54 is SNES Donut Plains 3. Although this is my least favorite Mario Kart 8 track, it's definitely an improvement over the original, Mainly for the reason that it looks pretty gorgeous now. You can drive underwater, there's some cheap cheeps in the lake area, you don't have to worry about making that stupid jump, the turns aren't as obnoxious, you can trick off the dirt hills, and there's even a, and there's even a bit of a mud, a mud shiny look near the end. It's a very pretty and simple course, and if I want something in Mario Kart 8 that isn't too chaotic, I'll go here. Occasionally though. Number 53 is N64 Mario Raceway in Mario Kart Wii. Now, this track is an N64 track, so it's going to be pretty basic, right? And while that is true, it still has some variety. You have the mushroom shortcut, the pipe, but a thing that this track proved on the original is the fact that because it's even more big, you have to, you can use things like mushrooms to take boosts, so that can help make things interesting if you have an, an amount of speed. And the grass looks cut nice too. Number 52 is N64 Toad's Turnpike. Now, Tur Toad's Turnpike was an originally very difficult course, and although it's been watered down in Mario Kart 8, what this track does have now is anti-gravity in the walls, which, although makes it go slower, is easier, so it's a risk versus reward system. Additionally, there's some surfer trucks that you can trick off of, and there's even the glider tr truck, and if you're lucky enough, you can even glide over the bridge in the original. It looks a lot nicer, and it's not nearly as thin, but it still feels slow, in my opinion. Number 51 is GBA The Ouija Circuit in Mario Kart DS. This is definitely the best 2D circuit track, because it has the rain gimmick to make it unique. The snaking in this track can help make it more interesting in Mario Kart DS than it was in Super Circuit. The rain looks better too, and it has this nice mellow feel to it, so I guess it's my guilty pleasure track in a way. Number 50 is SNES Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 7. This track was remade a few times, but in Mario Kart 7, it's nice. See, here you have the rainbow thwomps, and you can even trick off of the ground when the thwomps, um, when the thwomps pound down on it, and it ripples a bit. This makes things a bit more interesting. And additionally, it's just a pretty nice track. Number 49 is SNES Rainbow Road and Mario Kart 8. There really isn't that much to say that improved upon the original. I think there's like an extra ramp or two, 
plus the fact that the background looks a bit more pretty. It isn't just a starry sky, instead of some hills. It's still pretty nice though, and I do like that music. Number 48 is GBA Bowser Castle 2 in Mario Kart DS. Now, this track, in my opinion, isn't as good as the original, because the jumping physics in Super Circuit were a bit better when going off of these simple ramps than it was in Mario Kart DS. You still have the graded floors and thwomps, and, um, and the speed boost. But if one thing this track does right is it, it knows how to balance things and put a bit of variety every once in a while. Number 47 is GCN Dry Dry Desert in Mario Kart 8. Now, although this track isn't as dry anymore, he um, hence the oasis there, and because of the fact that there's geysers that you can trick off of, and some palm trees, I think those are good things. Additionally, you can even trick off some pillars now, and the, p and the pokies, are, there are not as many, which means there's more variety. While there aren't, aren't any more tornadoes, or the prana points in the sand that bite you up, it's still an okay track. Nothing too special, but better than the original.